Well, I see them the minimum times required at the very least, and then it depends on the duties themselves. I set a number of systems in place, which uh, makes it a little bit easier for them to come and have a chat. So it could be as many as six times a semester or as little as one. The easiest and most basic way is I've got a wiki on Student Central, but I also create a group on Student Central where I create an area where we can have synchronous discussions with ETTs. I send them news, anything that I find interesting that might help them with their studies or anything that has to do with industry news. Even though sometimes they might not come to see me, it keeps them engaged with me. I see my role as a facilitator. I don't see myself as a, I know everything, I know it all. No, I can facilitate. I do understand how the university works. I do understand the services that exist, and that is my role, is to bring the duties to the specialists. If I happen to be the specialist, resolve it there and then. They need to see that you care about their education, that they're not just a number. So as a personal duty, I find it's my responsibility to make sure that I make it easier for them to achieve the best they can uh, from the education they're getting here. They might come to talk about academic issues and sometimes they might come and talk about non-academic issues. The academic issues is the easiest one to deal with. Uh, sometimes they will come and talk to me about a module or a course or, or a piece of work that has nothing to do with any of the modules that I teach. I'm very careful to give them enough advice to help them, make them feel comfortable but not to step on the toes of what colleagues are trying to do. So I always reiterate that uh, they have to also book an appointment with the module leader for that particular module. I can give them my advice about the general academic uh, techniques and hits and tips. I can help them make sense of the brief if they need to, if they feel lost. They might come and talk about a reference letter. They might come and ask about advice studying for a master's. They might come and ask advice about which uh, company they might want to work for. Sometimes I might be there to offer them tissues where they um, you know, cry a little bit and uh, all they want is somebody to listen to their woos and uh, you know, try to, to offer a pair of ears for them. This is the important thing is to keep reminding yourself that, and I keep reminding myself that I'm not a counsellor. When you do offer those sympathetic ears, that you straight away have at hand all the resources that exist. Those could be the financial services, accommodation, and we have student support as well. Sometimes I even pick up the phone to make that initial appointment after I've consulted with the student. And if I feel that they're a little bit too apprehensive, I, I try to reassure them, uh, try to put them in contact with the right person. Might be a nurse, might be a student support officer, might be a financial advisor. And in some more severe cases, it could be um, you know, personal counselling uh, that the university offers. I would ask them to bring examples, and then together we will look at the examples. I try to be a bit Socratic. I don't like to give the answer straight away, because mm -hmm. I want them to, to, to come to the realisation of what it is that they're not doing. But if I see they're not getting it, I will help them and, and say, Ooh, have you thought about this, or have you thought about what if you added this to the essay, do you think that would improve it? Uh, do you think that might be the percentage that you're missing? Some colleagues uh, might have been dealing with 200 students and the feedback might be too generic. It's easier when you come to an academic to uh, actually analyse the feedback and uh, make it very personal. You can see the light bulb when somebody gets it and say, oh, I didn't think of that, or oh, I thought I wrote that, but obviously I didn't. Sometimes students misinterpret what they submitted. And even after they get the feedback from the module leader or the person who assessed it, they seem to have this mental block, not seeing what they didn't put. So it's, it's just really sometimes holding them by the hand and walking them through the process. It depends if they've told me what they want to come and see. In the wiki, all they have to do is put their name and a reason to have a, a bit of an idea. And if I see, I tend to look at my tutorial bookings a couple of days in advance also helps me plan my day and basically if there's a reason which I'm thinking mm, this this looks peculiar I will email them and say oh can you please send me some materials the night before if it's personal 
tutorials, the answer is yes. It's in the keywords, first of all. <laughs> what I do do in the discussion group that I've created in, in the student central group, I will do a social. For example, we did pizzas. They get to learn to know each other better. I tend to sit on the background, do the cooking <laughs> more, um, and they, they seem to network better. And that's one of the things I say to them, that there's far more support within their own peers than they ever realize. I do one at the very beginning when they are uh, allocated to me because it's a good way to get them involved because some of those uh, students, I mean, never teach. Compassion. You know, we academics, we, we expect too much from ourselves and then we tend to extend that to our students and we, we forget that th life is too complicated, things happen. So show a little bit more compassion, a little bit more empathy try to get into the shoes of the person, what they might be going through. Try to be less judgmental, if you can. And just do the best that you can. Breathe in, support the person. If you do not know, be honest and say, I, will not, I do not know, I will find out for you. And follow through. Do not, don't let them hang in. Follow through, show them you care, uh, and just do the best that you can.